Yo, Issa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in go. Only for your shield, you make me link up. See what the champions cup, Ben Francis, what the cup with all right, let's get you caught up with the all-exciting Scoopboy football season in Jamaica. And it is proving to be another wonderful campaign. And uh, let's uh, get you caught up with what's happening in the competition. And we start today with the, the, the Costa Cup because we're at the round of 16 stage. And all the remaining matches will be played on Saturday. And the, find, the top eight will advance to the quarterfinals of the competition. Let's have a look at the fixtures and how all the teams stack up. This is Group 1. They call this one the Group of Death coming in. Clarendon College, they have two wins and they are on six points. Cornwall College and St. Elizabeth Technical both have an opportunity to still advance. Mile Gully, they are out of the running for a spot in the quarterfinal. Mile Gully will play St. Elizabeth Technical on Saturday and Clarendon College will play Cornwall College. Now I tell you what, this group has produced one of the best games I've seen in the Da Costa Cup since since COVID-19 and it was in midweek on Wednesday. Clarendon College versus St. Elizabeth Technical. This was a cracker of a game. The technical quality, the technical ability of both teams on display in that game was absolutely wonderful. It was decided by a Devontae Hodges header in the second half. It was a fabulous game of football and I think we can expect more quality in the final set of matches. That Clarendon College, Cornwall College game will be a cracker because Cornwall College lost their game opening game to St. Elizabeth Technical. It was a close one. It was by three goals to two. So they have a lot of quality as well. Yeah. And here's the Hodges header that decided the St. Elizabeth Technical Clarendon College game under the lights in Santa Cruz. It was a wonderful game. One of the best games I've seen in the Da Costa Cup since COVID-19. And not to mention the crowd as well. That venue was jam-packed in Santa Cruz. And this is what the Costa Cup football is all about. So that is group one in the round of 16. Let's have a look at group two in the round of 16. The second seeds, Manchester High in a slight spot of bother here. They find themselves in third position on three points after being upset by BB Coke. Four goals to two in midweek. BB Coke leading the group with six points. Happy Grove, they are in second on three points. Manchester High will play Happy Grove on Saturday. I will say though that Manchester High go in to that game as favorites while Taki will play BB Coke. BB Coke go into that game as favorites as well. So I, I think the expectation there is that both Manchester High and BB Coke will qualify from group two. Let's have a look what group three is looking like and this is another tight one Dintel Technical leading the way with four points I consider them the most consistent team in the Da Costa Cup over the last um, 10 years without winning the title we just spoke to Xavier Gilbert he got them to a final a few years ago Christiana High in second on three points McGrath in third on two points and William Nib in fourth on a point Dintel Technical will play William Nib on Saturday that's the game we'll be broadcasting live on your home of champions so download the Sportsmax app and you can watch it on Sportsmax Plus. McGraw will play Christiana and what that means, it's a glorious opportunity for either McGraw or Christiana um, to get into the last eight of this competition because the winner there will pretty much guarantee themselves a spot in the last eight, which means in our TV game, Dintel versus William Nib, all for those two to play for. Let's have a look now at group four. This is the final one in the round of 16. Glenmere High, one of the pre-tournament favorites, leading the way with four points and goal difference over Garvey Maceo, who won the title in 2021. Foom Technical in third on three points. They still have a shot of going through Port Antonio, struggling. They've lost their first two matches and are out of contention. So Garvey Maceo, if they win against Port Antonio, that will take them through and so it will come down to Froome Technical versus Glenmuir. Glenmuir will only need a draw there, I suspect, to get into the last eight of the competition. So that group is coming down to the wire as well and will make the final day quite cracking. Now, the Urban Area competition, the Manning Cup, will also be serving up some tantalizing clashes on Saturday with the quarterfinal round commencing. This is how the teams got to the last eight. Mona High 
10-1 on aggregate over Jonathan Grant. Jamaica College, 6-1 on aggregate over Eltham. Excelsior losing 3-1 on aggregate against Heidel. St. George's College, 5-0 on aggregate against St. Jago. 3-0 and 2-0 scorelines there. Kingston College, they have done well under new coach Vassar Reynolds. 7-3 on aggregate over Campion College. That was a, a good tie, especially in the first leg where Campion College led by two goals to nil, uh, but then lost that game 3-2. Haile Selassie going out to Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli Gardens beat Haile Selassie in the knockout final last season, and this was a, another big win for them to move into the last eight. San Andrew Technical, the pre-championship favorites, they won their tie by seven goals to nil and I would think they are the team to beat going forward and St. Catherine getting the better of Wilmers 5-1 on aggregate Lance Whitaker is not going to like that that Wilmers are out of the Manning Cup let's have a look then at the matches to look forward to this weekend of course the teams have been put into two groups of four group one stats Mona Kingston College and St. Catherine that one you can consider the group of death and to start KC play Mona and St. Andrew Technical play St. Catherine and I tell you what, St. Andrew Technical have been brilliant again this season. Remember, they have lost three finals in the last six years, 2017, 2019, and last season. Their lead goal scoring in the competition this season with 59 goals, and they have been the leading defensive unit as well. Um, Co Coach Philip Williams has gone to a back three this season instead of his usual back four, and that seems to be working out well for them. There is no doubt that St. Andrew Technical possess the quality to go on and win the Manning Cup this season. The question is, when it comes to crunch time, will they be able to get the job done? And then there is Group 2 in the quarterfinal round of the Manning Cup. Let's have a look at that one. The defending champions, Jamaica College, always dangerous. St. George's College, Tivoli Gardens and Heidel. JC start against Heidel and St. George's College will play Tivoli Gardens in their opening quarterfinal round match. Two groups of four, the top two from each group will advance to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. That's it. I hope you're all caught up on Scoopboy Football from the land of wood and water. Remember to join us live on Saturday, William Nib versus Dintil Technical in that all-important Da Costa Cup encounter. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone. But you never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. Isa, schoolboy football.